G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and welcome to a what I think will be for many of you a very interesting video. I've got a front end, front end here, and you guessed it, it's off a Land Rover. But to look at it, it looks like any other typical four wheel drive solid axle front end. But once you look a little bit closer, it's amazing how different and complex it actually is. This is the front axle assembly of the Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1 and I'm going to talk to you about how it is different to its other counterparts out there on the market and some of the things that you need to be mindful of not just owning one of these vehicles but actually before you even consider buying one because it is an expensive investment if you get it wrong. Anyway, if this sounds like a video that is of interest to you, as always, you know exactly what to do. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a brew or something slightly stronger, and most importantly, stay tuned. So the Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1 is a interesting vehicle for a number of reasons. It's, I feel, a bit of a, a classic Land Rover that's overlooked by quite a few people. Um, it is a bit of an oddity, it had a very short production run, and the reason how it came about and all the rest is, is very interesting and fascinating. Um, and before I delve into the actual uh, inner workings of it, I'll just give you a brief overview just for those of you who haven't come across one before. So in the 1970s um, the Japanese motor industry was really starting to make headway in the world and with competitors such as Toyota and Datsun which would later become Nissan um, there was an idea that you know Land Rover needed to sort of pick up their game a little bit but after all the years of British Leyland having, you know, whittled away profits and all the rest, uh, there wasn't exactly a lot of money in the bank, sadly. So what they looked at doing is basically taking some of the Range Rover running gear and putting it into a Land Rover Series 3. Now, I'm being pretty general here, but that's essentially what they did. And what they did is they got the LT95 gearbox and they put that in. And then they found that they needed to change the front prop shaft. Uh, they needed to make sure that the actual prop shaft could reach the front diff and in order to do that they needed a prop shaft with three universal joints in it. The other thing that they needed to do was obviously upgrade the front axle in it and to do that they decided to put CVs. So the Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1 has CV joints in it. No other series Land Rover does. The diff ratios were also increased from 4.7 to 1 to 3.5 to 1, similar to that in the Range Rover themselves. And basically from there, and with some minor modifications to the chassis and obviously pushing the centre panel at the front of the vehicle forward, fitting a different radiator, uh, it's essentially, in, in very simple terms, it is in all intensive purposes a Land Rover Series 3. Now all this work went on to make the Land Rover a strong competitor to the Land Cruiser but sadly you know we all know how that went uh, over time. But it's left us with this really interesting vehicle and I bought my 109 inch Stage 1 as a bit of a family vehicle uh, and I want to do family trips in it, I want to do remote family trips, all the stuff that we've uh, been doing on the channel for you know, a number of years now. Uh, and I wanted a vehicle that was rugged, reliable and still a series Land Rover. So I figured uh, a Stage 1 with an LT95 gearbox and with a factory uh, 4BD1 in it was a pretty good idea. But oh little did I know um, <laughs> until you start sort of pulling stuff apart. 
So the front end, the swivel hubs here, are what I call the swivel hubs, are unique to the Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1 because they have to hold a CV joint in them. Uh, unlike the other Series Land Rovers, apart from the early Series 1s, um, they had a universal joint configuration. The CVs are unique, I believe, to the Stage 1 also. They're AU something something. Uh, and also the axles themselves are unique too because the actual wheelbase is probably slightly narrower than that of a Range Rover, just guessing there. Um, which makes them rare as hen's teeth and rocking horse droppings. And if you come across them, they have a massive long price tag. And the decimal place is all the way over that way off camera. So, um, not cheap. And that's not just where it ends. The pin, or the Ryko pin, which goes in the top here, uh, is completely and utterly unique to them also. It's actually a uh, thicker pin, or a larger gauged pin, uh, compared to the later Series 2As and Series 3s. So you can't use them. Uh, the bearing at the bottom, the pinion bearing in the swivel hub, is also unique to the Stage 1 and something that I've also just found out a couple minutes before doing this video because I was planning on doing this was the there's actually a seal in here to stop the uh, EP100 or the molybdenum grease going into the actual differential itself and there's two particular parts which are unique to this once again can't say unique enough there is a tin or chrome retainer in there and then behind that retainer there is actually a seal. Now the seal is a 9060664 and that's what's in the parts catalogue but it doesn't correspond to anything anywhere and I've looked all over the world and I can't seem to find one. So I've pulled this out, uh, the seal, to see what it actually is and it's a, a Galco uh, M Alco MIS 13 and basically they still make them um, I think it's George and Son seals in the UK but the seals are nearly $30 Australian they're 14 pounds each so they're not exactly cheap either uh, getting back to cost the, the pins or the Ryko pin just the pin alone is 55 pounds so say $100 Australian once you put postage in and all the rest and then you've got to pay another um, 55 pounds or so for the actual cup so that's going to be $300 just in uh, pins pins and cups and I already spent about $300 uh, just on bearings and gaskets and, uh, and all the rest so it's um, not cheap not cheap at all and it gets even more complex too because it's a Land Rover of course it does so the differential that sits behind here uh, as I said is a 3.5 to 1 diff ratio but the diff changed during the production run so these were in production I believe from 1979 to 1983-84 and there was a suffix C and then there was a suffix D and a suffix C I believe from the parts catalogue went up to 1980 and then after 1980 it was a suffix D. So I'm wanting to rebuild the differential because I want to know it's 100% right. I am toying with the idea of putting an air locker in it because if I've gone to all that trouble it's not that much more to put an air locker in it. Uh, but I haven't ordered any parts for the diff because I'm, I'm not sure is it a suffix C, is it a suffix D. Um, and I don't want to pull it all apart and then find you know, the old situation of square peg in a round hole, the parts don't fit. So there's a couple of things that you really need to look out for. There is a company called, I believe, Optional Design, Design Optional Equipment or something like that. 
and they're making uh, modified swivel hubs, modified CVs, so you can fit more modern CVs in it and all the rest. But I did a bit of window shopping on there and not criticising the business at all. Uh, but by the time I bought everything that I wanted and I wasn't being outlandish, um, I was looking at about $4,000 Australian, uh, which is a lot of money. That's a heck of a lot of money just for the front axle assembly. Um, and the unique parts within the vehicle don't just stop there. The, the LT95 is pretty much, you know, what you see is what you get. Uh, but the rear prop shaft off it is obviously different because a 109 inch chassis is slightly sh longer than a Range Rover. Um, and the LT95 is bigger than the Series 3 gearbox in length, at least. So the prop shaft on the rear is different too. And they're about $900 Australian. So uh, not, not cheap. And if I'd known all this to begin with, um, would I have bought the vehicle? I don't know. I don't know. I guess you can't think that way about these vehicles and all the rest. But it's certainly a very, very interesting learning curve. And I am kind of glad that I have got it in some ways because it's uh, something different and I enjoy learning uh, new things. But anyway, I know this is a pretty basic walkthrough, but it's something that comes up in a lot of conversations. And it's something that, unless you've got one, I don't think you would know a lot about them. I certainly didn't until I bought this. And I'd read a, quite a bit about Stage 1s uh, on forums and in magazine reviews and articles and all the rest. Uh, but it just didn't go into anywhere near the detail that I've sort of explained here today. And I'm going to continue to restore this stage one there'll be more videos coming out this year because I think it's a um, really really good vehicle for this series servicing your 4x4 because not only does it encompass the series Land Rover technology it's an infusion with the later technology from the Range Rover and that would ultimately lead to the the 110 and the Parenti and there is a lot of sort of in some regards there is a bit of a transition with some of the parts um, within it, certainly with the uh, 4BD1, which is over there off camera. So it's uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But anyway, um, I'll let you be. Thank you very much for stopping by here. And uh, look, if you are enjoying these videos, you are finding them useful, informative, and all the rest, then please do support not me, but seriously, series on Patreon by clicking on the Patreon icon on the end screen. Delve into the content section down below. You can click on the Patreon link there. You can also check out our newly revised online store. We've got everything. We've got phone covers, we've got socks, we've got these things called hoodies, which is like a beanie and a jumper infused together. And we've even got pint glasses. So there's no excuse not to treat yourself. But anyway, I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll catch you in the next one. See you then.